Hey, Fedheads, welcome to another episode of Cigar Federation Cigar Review. I'm John, the cigar surgeon. Today we're going to be ruining something that's uh, near and dear to my heart from Warped. If you follow my reviews, you know I'm a big fan of Warped. And this comes from a very, very generous Redditor who sent it as an anonymous bomb to me. I'm very happy to get it. Uh, without further ado, the Warped Black Honey La Colmina. You know, in 2015, we all kind of went a little crazy on the La Colmania as a fantastic cigar. So this is a 5x48 Bellicoso. I'm a huge fan of that uh, Vitola. That's a big fan. Of. This is a tweaked version of the La Colmena using a Habano Oscar wrapper. It's the same wrapper they used on the uh, Aloso, which I also have a box of. I really enjoy that cigar as well. So it gives it a much darker profile and... Uh, I think Kyle was quoted as saying that it's a little bit spicier, which is right in my wheelhouse. So really looking forward to this. Uh, I don't even know if this is available anymore. It probably isn't. They only put out 60 bundles of 10. Very limited to retailers. Atlantic Cigar was one of them. And uh, I think it's a list of 13, only 13 retailers, and they're at fifteen fifty a cigar. So needless to say, this is one heck of a bomb. He had other cigars in there, but this is one heck of a bomb. So uh, we're going to get right on to the nosing and lighting because I'm really excited to uh, check this out. Lots of leather, tons and tons of spicy leather on the on the wrapper here. That might be one of the most leathery cigars I've ever smelled. Wow. Some cedar on the foot. A little bit of pepper, like a white pepper. But not much else. But that uh, that wrapper, boy, boy howdy, I tell ya. All right. Well, enough of that. I want to get lighting. So as it's a Bellicoso, won't be able to use my trusty V cutter. I mean, I could use my trusty V cutter, but I'm going to use a guillotine cutter because I find guillotine cutters a little bit more reliable on a torpedo. Uh, of course, I'm going to use my single uh, single torch from Zycar, and I'm going to do my torch and go straight into smoking. So this is my, um, my toast torch method. Everyone's got a different method of lighting cigars. This is mine. So you want to hold the flame way back from the wrapper here. Make sure you don't scorch it. My flames turned up a little high because it was uh, quite a bit colder the last couple of weeks when I was doing shows. You need to turn that flame up to keep it going. Now that it's a little bit warmer today, I don't really have to worry about that too much. So the key here is to get a nice even torch. Toast it all the way around without scorching the wrapper so that when you cut and start drawing on it, it's immediately good to go. And the benefit is there's no hot gases being drawn into the cigar, so you're not altering the flavor profile in that first few puffs. All right, that seems pretty good. So the key here is to not take too much off. Oh, wow. What a start. This intense honeyness. I don't think that's a word. This intense honey, maybe a little bit of like vegetal note behind it with a little bit of chaser of light spices. Lots of medium minus spices on the retro hill, followed by some sweet, sweet honey post draw. What a, what a start. So I'm going to keep smoking this and I'll keep checking in as the flavors transition. So I'm only a couple minutes in, but already the richness is intensifying. There's some cocoa in the mix. The spices in the retro hail are already ramping up from a medium minus to a medium, and I suspect they're going to keep climbing. There's post draw pepper that's kind of lingering at a light plus right now, building to a medium minus. Everything I loved about the La Colmena just stepped up a notch in, in the spiciness for sure. This is uh, really good. The draw, of course, is uh, perfect. I would expect nothing less out of anything rolled out of the El Titan, the bronze factory. So, so far, so good. So about 10 minutes in. Everything's hitting on all cylinders here. You've got some aged cedar. You've got black pepper on the post hail, post draw. You've got spices in the retro hail. You've got this rich, rich, just amazing honey sweetness. And look at that burn. I mean, that is just razor sharp. Now, I said earlier that we'd smoked this back in 2015, but obviously my, me my memory is playing tricks on me. Rob smoked this back in 2014, gave the original La Colmena a uh, 95 rating, which is huge, a box split, but I can see why. I mean, this is the uh, upscale La Colmena, and I wish I'd got my hands on this. Even at 1550, this, so far, this is an amazing cigar. If the rest of the cigar is like this first half inch, 
this would be a, a box buy all the way. Absolutely all the way. Just passing the 20 minute mark. Oh, absolutely outstanding first third. Um, I can see why on the original Aquaman, if it's anything like this, Rob would have rated a 95 box split. This would be a, at least a 95, 96 for me. Again, super kicking myself that I never got in on these. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of the, the way it works is there's so many new cigars out, it's really tough to keep track. This is one that I'm uh, unfortunate to have missed. I think if you have your opportunity to get your hands on these, uh, like I said, I, I'm only I'm only like an inch in, but I can tell you right now, if you have your opportunity to get your hands on these, you really, really want to get your hands on these. So I'll check back in and see how things are going. So unlike a lot of cigars where the spice starts out right up front and then kind of drops off as the cigar progresses, this is a cigar where the spices started out very subtle, light plus, medium minus. And now as I'm sort of winding down the first third, the spices are definitely in the medium, medium plus category. So... I don't imagine they're going to keep climbing from that, or I'm a little scared if they do, but it, this is a very up-spiced warp cigar, and I enjoy it. I like spices in my cigar. I'm a big fan. Um, it's that really nice, rich pepper that lingers. It's it's not super overpowering. It, it doesn't blast your nose out, but if you like something that's spicy and peppery, this is this is it. 35 minutes in, starting to transition into the middle third. You can see the ash is still holding very, very tight. Not surprising. It's a very well-constructed cigar. The sweetness, which played really strongly in the first third, is starting to fall off. It's being replaced by the cedar. It's not overpowering, but it's at about a medium minus. And the cocoa's picked up. Cocoa's kind of matching the cedar in intensity. So great start to the first third. Looking forward to seeing how it progresses. Passing the 40-minute mark, the uh, cedar is still there. Mixing in now with some spices, so you get a nice spicy cedar, which is really tasty. Spices again, medium minus to match the intensity of the uh, cedar. There's some leather coming through. Uh, it's very subtle. It's kind of on the post draw, so it kind of hits at the end of the draw and then kind of carries on the post draw. But it mixes in with the with the spices that are there, so you're not getting just leather. There is a, it's a spicy leather. It's very nice. Really enjoyed the middle third of the La Colmena Black Honey. It's a great, great Vitola. And I'm enjoying the blend very, very much. As we move into the final third here, it's just transitioning from the middle third to the final third. The sweetness does come back. It's playing in nicely, rounding out the flavors. I kind of want this cigar to last forever, but obviously it's not going to. When I get into the final third here, I'll talk more about the flavors that are there. Checking out pairings here. This is a very nuanced and structured cigar, so I wouldn't go with anything too strong. Uh, wine might overpower it, so I would be thinking... Uh, Medium-bodied scotch, something that's not sherried. Root beer would be a no-brainer. Coffee, coffee would be excellent with this, although, you know, coffee kind of pairs with everything. This would be a fun cigar to try a different few few pairings with if you can get your hands on it. And if you can't get your hands on it, again, highly recommend it. It's a shame I didn't have a chance to smoke this in 2015. I think this would have been probably the cigar to beat. I think this would have beat out the Don Ronaldo as my cigar of the year, and I really, really enjoyed the Don Ronaldo. So we're about to get into the last third here, and we'll talk about the flavors that are there. So we're in the last third here, sitting at the one hour, five minute mark. Probably smoking this a little bit fast, but it's always tough with a really tasty cigar to not smoke it too fast. The cedar's kind of falling off a little bit. Leather's falling off a little bit. Um, it's a little bit more subtle and soft than it was in the middle third. There's still a lot of cedar in the post draw. Um, it's really nice, rich sweetness on the uh, retro hail. Spices have fallen off a lot. Very light plus. Wrapping up the review of the La Colmena, the Warped La Colmena Black Honey. Fantastic cigar. Definitely would have been Cigar of the Year candidate for 2015. Again, I'm really sorry I didn't have the chance to smoke this sooner. If you can get your hands on the, the Warped Black uh, Black Honey La Colmena, get your hands on this. This is a fantastic cigar. It's definitely spicy. It's a little bit more full-bodied than what Rob described the original La Colmena as. You don't want to miss out on this. Hope that everyone enjoyed the review. Make sure to check out the written review at CigarFederation.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube if you liked the video. And, of course, you can catch us on podcast as well. Thanks very much.